Model steam engine, live steam tests, part 7. The steam test of a Stuart Twin Victoria steam plant, fitted with a Stuart HB6 boiler, and a Southworth engine's duplex steam pump. I made the condenser, and the brass water tank is a commercial item, but not from Stuart models. These video clips are taken from a series I made a while ago called Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant. The boiler's lit and it's raising steam. I'm filling the displacement lubricators, first of all on the engine and now on the pump. I just have to wait until I get some pressure in the boiler. This boiler's fine, it's not the fastest at raising steam, but the good thing is the burner is very quiet. Blow lamp burners are generally more efficient, but the noise that they make does get on your nerves after a while. Here I'm just checking that the pump pistons move freely. The pump is all oiled and ready to go, well apart from this bit. Now it's time to oil up the engine. When oiling up a steam engine, it is important to get oil on every moving part. Don't miss any of them out. For this short steam test, I'm just externally oiling the crankshaft. I'm not filling the small glass lubricators. While well, I've been busy filling lubricators and oiling engines, the boiler has been raising steam. There's about, what, 40 pounds per square inch on the gauge at the moment? So it's time to open the valves and warm up the engines. The first steam that enters the steam engine immediately condenses the water, so it's quite important to get rid of this, because you do not want a hydraulic lock on the pistons in the cylinders. This Twin Victoria doesn't have drain cocks. Normally you'd open drain cocks and this lets the water out, but it's very messy, it goes everywhere, and really, drain cocks are not required on an engine that's this small. It is, however, very important never to force the piston over top dead centre if it doesn't want to go, because there will be a hydraulic lock in the cylinder and you will break something. I'm testing the outlet valve from the condenser to let the water down into the bucket on the floor, and that's working fine. So now I'm going to stop speaking and just let you watch and listen to the engine. I've opened the valve to the pump, which immediately hydraulic locks because the first steam that hits a cold engine condenses the water, but in no time at all it clears and the pump starts to move. At the moment the water bypass valve is open, so all of the water will be going into the tank, coming from the tank, through the pump and back to the tank. Apart from that leaky pipe, everything seems to be fine.
After a while, I need to drain the condenser, otherwise it will get full, and the water will then start to go up the chimney. I don't want that. I'd prefer it to go into this jug on the floor. There's quite a lot, as you can see, and you can see the oil floating on top of the water. It's a good idea to leave the drain valve on the condenser open all the time, so it's permanently draining into the jug. Here's the water level in the boiler, currently half a glass, which is about right, halfway full. The model steam boilers that I work on are always half full, they're never half empty. I do like to be optimistic. As you can see, the gaskets that are fitted are successful. No leaks from the water chest, and no leaks from the top of the steam chest either. And the gaskets are just pieces of brown paper, no shellac, no glue, no sealant, no nothing, just brown paper. Well that's about it, I'll just leave you with the engine running once again. The high quality steam plant is now completed. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.